Hey everyone, we are here today in Calistoga at the beautiful Chateau Montalina to hear all about the rich history. We're going to sit down with Christian, the tasting room coordinator. So why don't you come with us and venture beyond the barrel? Thank you so much, Christian, for sitting down with me to tell me all about the rich history. Thank you for having me, Barbara. I'm really excited to be on the show. I'm hoping that you enjoy our rich history that I have here at Mont Elena. Perfect. Let's dive in. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and enjoy a little bit of our 2018 Chardonnay, just to kind of get things going with us. Perfect. We're not going to have a whole lot of time to try both or, say, all five wines we normally would have here at Mont Elena in our tasting, but these two wines that we will have are two wines that are very important to us here. Yeah, hope you enjoy. When it comes to Mont Elena, we really have a lot of history dating back all the way to the 1880s. We're considered to be one of the oldest wineries here in the Napa Valley, and we're really grateful to kind of have that history with us as well. Our kind of history kind of dives into a few different areas. Our Chardonnay is a little bit more of a recent achievement that we've had back in the 1970s, but we really have to thank our you know first owners, and that's going to be the Tubbs family. So the castle we're in right now was built back in 1882, utilizes a lot of like local redwood trees that were found here on the property that were used to make some of the foundation, the beams here as well. The stone that you see that's right now exposed is coming from over in Sonoma County. And so it's a little bit more kind of say local to the area itself, but it took six years to construct the castle itself. And we were considered one of the largest producing wineries in the United States at that time. Unfortunately, Prohibition ended up say, affecting us a little bit heavily during that time, so we weren't really able to do much in the early 1900s. But we were able to come back in the 1930s and 40s, but unfortunately the Tubbs family ended up selling it off in the late 1940s. Mm -hmm. During that time, we ended up going to a little bit of a dormant phase where we were then purchased by a Chinese family known as the Frank family. Now the Frank family wasn't really a family that was really too interested in like the vineyard property itself or really you know, revitalizing the winery itself. They're interested in just making this place their home. So they bought this back in 1958 and decided to convert the upper level of the castle into their home itself. And so what we have right here is actually a fully functioning residence. Uh, we have about three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a gorgeous kitchen that just really kind of just fills the needs that we have here on the property. And it's an enormous great room, which actually used to be one of the main entrance ways that we would get barrels up into the castle back in the 1800s. Currently though, right now we're owned by the Barrett family. They end up acquiring the property back in the 1970s. The Frank family owned us in the 1950s to 60s. They end up realizing that this level of uh, property would be a little bit too much upkeep for them, especially since this was supposed to be considered their retirement home. But they did end up leaving us a few kind of goodies here on the property, the most notable being Jade Lake. Jade Lake is a gorgeous piece of our property that kind of really kind of symbolizes the rich Chinese history that we have on here. We have these two beautiful jade pagodas that are just stunning in their own right. So that was kind of like a little bit of a testament of York Frank's love to his wife Janine. And that's the reason why we call Jade Lake Jade itself. Because Jade was kind of like a little bit of a cute nickname for his wife Janine. Uh, the Barrett family themselves, they were kind of starting off from a little bit of a different background. They were real estate attorneys down in Southern California who decided they want to go with a little bit of a change in career paths. In the 1970s, they ended up acquiring Ma Elena and revitalizing it back to the winery that it was. The only thing is we hadn't really seen much in terms of our wine production since the 1930s and 40s. So we really had to start from scratch. And that's kind of where the wow. Chardonnay comes in. It was a wine that we were able to source from the Oak Knoll district in order to kind of say fill our need to sell wine to get ourselves getting to that moment where we could actually finally produce the estate cab, which really we weren't able to harvest until 1978. And after that, it took an additional four years of aging to get it ready to that point where we were actually able to open any bottles of it as well. Uh, the Bear family though, they were able to strike, you know, metaphorically gold in a sense. This gentleman known as Stephen Spears decided to put this competition back in the 1970s called the Judgment of Paris. They wanted to put exactly the best wines of Napa versus the best wines of France. At that moment in time, there wasn't really a whole lot of uh, wine movement going on in the valley itself. 
we may have been right around 40 or so wineries at that time versus nowadays we're maybe around 500 just right here in the Napa Valley itself. Uh, Malena really kind of stayed focused on shining on its estate Cabernet Sauvignon, but because it not being very ready at that time, mm -hmm. we were making our Chardonnay. So it ended up making its way over to France, won first place in the whites category, and ended up just you know, expanding the Napa Valley after that point. Nowadays now, we focus a little bit more on the estate Cab, which is another beautiful wine that we love here as well. This is coming all directly here from the Calistoga property. It's gonna be a nice little blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, and Petit Verdot. It is a wine that also specializes in ageability. It's a wine that you can easily see go for about 40 years as well. And that's kind of like another little focus that Molly really enjoys as well. We like to make wine that tastes really well early on in its life and also that has ageability as well. So even our Chardonnay, which is traditionally you know, white wines you don't see to have that long life to them, you can actually see the Chardonnay go for 10 to sometimes 15 years. Or if you end up getting a little bit more of a proper, say, cellar for it, such as like a 140-year-old castle that we have here, we actually still have wines dated back to the 1970s that we pull from as well. So the 73 Chardonnay that won the Judgment of Paris, we actually currently still have about eight bottles left down in our cellar. And they are surprisingly still holding up right there as well. They are delicious. But Cab is always kind of like a big thing here in the Napa Valley itself. It definitely drives a lot of people to come out here and kind of just view the property itself and just kind of say grow grapes as well. But the estate Cab is really where we shine the brightest at Malena. Uh, it's a gorgeous Cabernet. It really shows exactly what the Bear family helped to achieve from here. We're just trying to capture what we can see out in the vineyard and transition that into the bottle itself. But no, I hope you end up enjoying that. Awesome. It is delicious, actually. No, it Thank is quite lovely. Thank you so much. <laughs> delicious. So tell me more about the vineyard. I heard it's the most soil diverse area in Napa County. No, yeah, Malena itself is really fortunate enough with the way its vineyards are structured. We have a nice little say blend of about three different soils, uh, alluvial, volcanic, and sedimentary. Sedimentary is uh, a little bit something that's a little bit more on the smaller scale that we have here on our vineyard. Focuses a little bit more on like our Zinfandel that we have grown out here. The alluvial is a little bit more wide abundant that you see here in the valley itself. We have a lot of Cabernet, Petit Verdot, Petit Syrah being grown onto there. But the volcanic soil is kind of something that we're really proud of. We get a lot of that coming from over in Mount St. Helena, which is gonna be a little dormant dome shield volcano. It's actually the uh, tallest mountain peak that we have here in the valley itself and coincidentally also where Montalena gets its name from. Mount St. Helena, Montalena, a little <laughs> contraction right there. No, it's kind of just a little like fun fact about it, the property itself, but that's where we primarily grow the estate Cabernet Sauvignon on there. The uh, downside about volcanic soil, it's a little bit more on the dry and arid style, which is you know fantastic for the grapes itself, but really affects in how much we're able to say produce from it as well. So we actually have some older vines there that are dated back since the 1970s, which are these you know old, really kind of say huge, like giant vineyards that they're not gonna be your similar vines that you see out in most vineyards and traditionally nowadays, those ones are a little bit more neater and cleaner. These ones really kind of say showcase like how like new and emerging modeling it was in the 1970s. But it's something that we're really say fortunate and you know beautiful about. It's similar to kind of like our rich building that we're inside here today as well. I mean, it's just astonishing what they were able to do back in the 1880s. Surprisingly, this building only costed $16,000 to construct back in 1882, which I think I looked this up back a few years ago. It's somewhere in the neck of around a little under $400,000 in today's money right there, wow. which isn't really gonna get you a whole lot in the Valley nowadays. <laughs> I think vineyard land may reach around like half a million to a million dollars an acre, which you know, you'll get some fruit from there, but not as much as like a castle in itself right there. Uh, that is kind of like what really makes Montlain unique, just having that diverse uh, vineyard itself and this like beautiful chateau that we're in right here today. It just really say, you know, summarizes Montlain's rich history and what we have here as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. No problem. Thank I you really for having enjoyed me. everything about the story and the vines and the soil and I am so happy that you were able to sit down with me today. Thank you very much, Barbara. It was a pleasure to do this with you. Thanks. <laughs>